iPadOS 26 has undoubtedly made the iPad much more Mac-like, from the floating windows, to the new windowing system, the files app, even the taskbar and menu bar, all things that came from the Mac that make it look like you're running a Mac OS system on an iPad. But what we're going to do in this video is kind of look behind the curtain a little bit and see exactly what that means on a nuance level. Is it really making you as productive as a Mac? Can somebody from a Mac now go all in on the iPad? I'm going to talk about some hidden features and nuanced details of all these different things that came out with iPad OS 26 so you really understand what it means from a workflow perspective to see if iPad OS 26 is truly the update that we've needed to make the iPad a true computer replacement for most people. Let's get into it. But now before I do bring up the iPad, definitely consider subscribing to the channel because it helps motivate us to make more deep dives like this one. But now let's get into iPad OS 26. Okay, so the first one is going to still be a little bit about the windowing system, but it's what the windowing system truly enables in iPad OS 26. Because yes, we've wanted to have floating windows and fully kind of customizable, sizable windows and things like that. But what it really unlocks is going to be background tasks and much, much better multitasking. For example, whenever I would edit a video in LumaFusion and want to export it, I needed to stay inside of LumaFusion in order for that export to actually work and see itself through. And that would be a 15 to 30 minute process where pretty much it rendered my iPad unusable when I needed to do that. And that's not just limited to LumaFusion, it was all major exporting video applications like a Final Cut Pro and any other ones that are out there. Exporting just it needed to be on the forefront of the screen, but now the windowing system does allow you to leave the application and let it run the background task and still export in the background without really slowing anything down and also letting you use your iPad at the same time. So being able to do that is something that of course is very Mac OS and very desktop like, and now it's over on the iPad Pro. So you can do that with a bunch of different tasks and it doesn't just end at LumaFusion and exporting, it also runs with other applications. Another great example that I use personally is my Blackmagic camera app. I use it as a viewfinder on my iPad. So I have my iPhone right here. I have the Blackmagic camera app right here. I'm able to see what I'm doing. So I'm able to keep myself in frame and actually talk to the camera. And now I can have a window over it, being able to read my notes, being able to go to different applications. Whereas before it really didn't work that way. It would cancel out, it would disconnect whenever I was trying to use it as a viewfinder. And now I'm able to multitask in that way. So I can look at my notes and also make sure that I'm in frame without any issues whatsoever. So this ability of having background tasks is something that's huge in terms of a workflow and making the iPad feel much more like a computer from a productivity standpoint versus just a glorified tablet. And then of course you have regular background tasks like being able to download things in the background and being able to view that. There was a form of this previously, but now it's a lot more obvious, it's a lot more Mac-like, and it's a lot easier to manage. So if you have something downloading Safari or if you are downloading something off of an SSD onto your iPad, you're still able to use your iPad fully and still get a notification and still get a little bit of a UI element in the lock screen as well as in the application itself to let you know how long it's going to take, that it is running in the background, that there aren't any issues, which again is a Mac-like feature which really wasn't around with iPad OS. So again, multitasking with background tasks is what is truly enabled with the new windowing system. Now, next up is going to be the file application. For years, I told people that the file system in the iPad while albeit it was taking the correct strides forward to kind of being its own finder, it still was nowhere near the productivity and kind of the, just the familiarity of what the Finder app gave you on Mac OS. I mean, it worked like a file system, but there was always something weird and wrong about it. But now the file system is as close as it's ever been to being the Finder application. Some awesome examples are, which is gonna be the main one for me, being able to dock a file into your actual dock and have multiple of those for that matter. So I'm able to put a bunch of different files in my dock that I use all the time. So for right now, I have two that are pinned onto my dock, one being my recent cloud download. So whatever I download on my Mac, on my iPad or on my iPhone is always gonna be on my iPad dock. And then secondly, it's going to be my iCloud desktop. Whatever is downloaded or saved onto that desktop, whether it is on any of my devices, it's now accessible on my dock through the files application right there, which I absolutely love. And then of course it is more Mac-like in terms of being able to customize it. So yes, you can pin it down there, but you can also view it in a fan. You can also view it in a grid view and then also interact with it very easily. So that alone has made the file app much better, but it doesn't really end there. The second thing about the files application that's been absolutely amazing is something as simple as being able to customize your columns. 
If you guys have ever used Finder, one of the most rudimentary and second nature things is to resize your columns just by simply clicking and dragging. Now you're able to do that in the files application. So you can do that. You can also easily sort based on the columns, based on the name, the size, alphabetically, chronologically, all things that are available in the Finder application is now there. Everything that you can find on the Finder application is now there in the Files app. And some of these were there before, but now it like it feels like it is the Finders app. Before it felt like it was not the Finder app, but now it does, making it a lot more easy to use. And then of course you got some of the more highlighted kind of nicer features, which is being able to color code folders, which does in include a tag in there, being able to add emojis and customizations to make the folders look a little bit different. So visually you can find what you need a little bit easier. Those are things that again, are nice to have, but it's not really truly changing the function. The big ones are the ones that I mentioned earlier, being able to really manipulate the data in the files application as if it is the finders app, I think is an amazing thing to see. And now let's get into the third section, which is going to be the menu and windowing controls. Of course, we mentioned the windowing mode that is already there, and that's kind of the headlining feature. And visually, it does make it feel like you're using a Mac OS computer. But now some things that I did want to touch on is going to be what this all means. And again, what this all enables at the end of the day. So one thing that I was just not a fan of when it came to Stage Manager is that the windows weren't made to be perfectly aligned with each other. The windows were made to overlap. They consistently made themselves overlap, even though you tried to kind of manipulate them and fix them. Stage Manager, when you would try to move the windows around, almost acted as if it was the home screen where you would try to move an application, you move it to one spot, and then everything else would kind of just jumble itself up. That's kind of how Stage Manager was and kind of still is that way right now. That's why this windowing system is leaps and bounds better because firstly, it'll stay persistent. So if you resize a window, close it and open it back up, it'll be persistently that size and you don't have to worry about it kind of resizing another window in order for it to fit. You have to do that manually. And of course it is very easy, but it is more familiar because when you go on Mac OS, you open a window up, it's not going to resize another window to make room for the new window. It's just going to go right on top of it. So again, this feels much more familiar. Secondly is going to be the traffic like kind of controls that you have on the top left corner to close, minimize, and then also enlarge whatever window you're using. But what I like about this is that they also introduced the tiling system as well as split view built right into here. So if you hover over the green button and kind of leave your mouse there, it'll open up this menu. Or if you hold down on the green button, it'll also open up this menu. But you have a few different options here. Of course, you have the traditional split view. You have the tri split view as well. So you have three apps side by side in kind of full screen mode, which you still have the little bar in between them to resize each one of them individually. And then of course you have your tiling mode as well, which lets you have up to four different applications open, at least open so you can see all of them at the same time. You are able to have up to 12 windows open in one page, but it starts to get a little bit convoluted at that point, but it is nice that you can quickly tile different applications without, but it is nice to know that you can quickly tile applications the same way that you can on Mac OS. And then a little trick that I've learned from using iPad OS 26 for about three weeks now at this point is that if you do have two windows side by side and they don't have to be the same exact size, you can have one that's taking up half the screen, another one that's just taking up maybe like a top quarter of the screen. If you bring it close to that second window, that little bar in the middle, which lets you kind of resize them from right to left, does show up no matter if you are in that split view or not. It kind of like senses that you're trying to do that Bring it close enough, it has that little bar and lets you manipulate it to whatever size you see fit. And then in that same light of managing all these windows, what was introduced with iPadOS 26 was that top taskbar and menu bar. So that menu bar, albeit from a functionality standpoint, is still missing a few things. But what I like about this is that it is on a per app basis. So if you do have seven windows open at the same time, the window that's on top or that you're clicked on will have their corresponding menu bar at the top, very similar to Mac OS. And what's great about this is that for me, I've been using it as a shortcut cheat sheet. So I'm able to go in there and see exactly what different shortcuts I would need to learn for that specific application. So I can just kind of hotkey everything as I see fit and not have to rely on the trackpad and mouse. So the menu slash taskbar on the top is something that makes it look, feel, and also act more like Mac OS, albeit they do need to add a little bit more functionality because again, it's still a bit watered down, but it is nice to have. And then the last thing I do want to bring up when it comes to iPadOS 26 and making it more Mac-like is going to be the addition of a dedicated preview application. So this was added to not only the iPad, but also to iOS, and it's kind of had now its counterpart also on Mac OS, but the preview application works almost one-to-one -one how it does on Mac OS. It lets you open up whatever PDF or any JPEG files or whatever the case may be, and you have all the same tools. And on top of that, you have a little bit more because you do have the ability to use your Apple Pencil through the preview application. So you're able to annotate in real time, you can magnify, you can add circles, you can add shapes, you can export it, you can share it, you can rotate it if you want to, you can highlight pieces, you can remove backgrounds, everything built into the preview app 
And what's nice is that it is syncing across your Apple ID. So whatever you open on your Mac is now visible on the preview application on the iPad. You can manipulate it how you see fit, then send it to your Mac by saving it to your iCloud desktop and then uploading it to whatever you need to. So again, the ecosystem is just getting stronger altogether with this preview application. And again, it makes it feel like it's a tool that's coming from Mac OS over to iPad OS. The only thing that's missing from the preview app, which I really wish to add, is when you do export it, being able to change the file type. Right now you can only export it as a PDF or export it as the right file that it is in right now. Where on the Mac, you do have a little bit of optionality in terms of what you want to export as, whether it is a JPEG or JPEG 2000 or a PDF or a text file. So being able to bring that feature over will really solidify the preview application on the iPad. So after watching all the things that I showed off, I would love to see the comments down below and kind of get a discussion going on whether or not iPadOS 26 has now fully been able to replace the need for a MacBook or a MacBook Air. I know that for some people, the MacBook is still going to be a necessity for them, but I do think that meter is moving a little bit. Whereas before, for most people, I could not recommend the iPad as being a full computer replacement, even though that's what I like to do. But now that needle's moving, instead of it being maybe a 10 to 90 split where 10% of people can use the iPad, now I think it's a little bit more down the middle as a 50-50 because the iPad is essentially a super high powered netbook that can be used for a lot of communication stuff. Now there's some nuanced details and nuanced use cases for people that still need their MacBook and that's totally fine. And that's why there's tools and there's options to decide on which one you wanna go with. But like I said, I do think iPadOS 26 moves that needle ever so slightly closer to the middle, which is going to be, now it's a toss up in terms of what you wanna get, either a MacBook or an iPad. But that'll do it for this video. If you enjoyed it, leave a little dolphin in the comments down below. If you wanna watch more videos like this one, check out one of these videos right here. Until next time, I'm Fernando. Peace, everyone.